Hey everyone, Julian here. Hope you're all well. Welcome to episode five of the Learning Flask series. In this episode, we're going to be looking at Ginger. And Ginger is the default templating engine that comes with Flask. Um, it's super powerful. We can do all sorts of cool stuff with Ginger. We can create templates, which we can then reuse throughout our HTML, throughout our web application. Um, we can work with variables. We can work with conditionals. We can work with loops. We can do all sorts of good stuff right within our HTML. So let's get started. So as always, I do have a text-based version of this tutorial on the website. I'll chuck a link in the description. We've got a terminal and we've got VS Code up and running. Of course, you don't have to use VS Code. You can use any editor you want. It's your choice. Right, so templates. Well, first up, let's uh, get our app running. And as you can see, we are here at a local host on the Flask development server. And if we go to the root, you can see we're left off with this stunning web page. And we've got admin dashboard. Yep. And we've got admin profile. And I believe we also have an about page. Yep. There we go. So let's, uh, let's just go back home. Okay. So templates. How do we work with them? Well, first of all, we need to create a base template. Now the base template is kind of what it says it is. It's a base template. And then we're gonna create child templates, which are gonna inherit or extend those base templates. So let's go ahead and do it. And if you've been following along with this series, you'll know that we've split our application up into nice logical blocks. So let's go ahead and create a new directory inside our templates public directory. Let's create a new one called templates. And let's do the same in admin. Let's create a new folder called templates. And inside each of these, we're going to then create our base, base template. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call this one public template.html. And inside admin templates, let's do the same admin templates.html. So let's start with our public one. So how do we create a template? Well, first of all, I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a bit fed up of using plain old HTML. So let's, uh, let's jazz it up with a bit of CSS and JavaScript. So let's go ahead and get Bootstrap. Now, if you've never worked or heard of Bootstrap before, it's a CSS and JavaScript library that's totally free to use. So just come to the Bootstrap website, come to getting started, scroll down to the start template and copy. And I'm going to paste that into our public template and I'm going to paste that into our admin template. And I'm just going to close this so we've got a bit more room. So let's start with our public template. So what do we need to do? Well, we want to import our CSS and our JavaScript that, you know, the files that we created so we can use them. So we can, what we can do in index.html, where we imported our style sheet and our JavaScript using the URL4 function, we can just reuse that code. So let's go ahead and do that. So back in our public template, I'm just going to, let's put a note here and just say custom CSS. And if you use a Visual Studio code, control and forward slash to quickly give yourself a nice comment and we'll just paste that in and give ourselves a bit of space. And let's copy that over to our admin template because that's going to be using the same CSS. And then let's do the same with our JavaScript. Let's copy that. And in our public template, I'm just going to go and stick this at the very bottom just before the closing body tag and save that and the same with our admin templates. Let's paste that in. And again, just to recap, we're using the URL4 function. We're giving it our directory, our static directory, which is up here, and then a path to the file name. And then Flask is going to look at this. It's going to build a URL and essentially just replace whatever is in between these curly braces with the, uh, the path to the files that we want to load. So let's create our base template. So what we're going to do, let me close this. So in a base template, you declare what's called blocks. 
So let me show you how to declare a block and then I'll talk it through. So we use a slightly different syntax. We use the single set of curly braces and inside of those we have a set of um, percentage symbols. And then inside here, how do we declare a block? Well, conveniently we write the word block followed by the name that we want to give the block. So in this case, we're going to call it block title. And then you close a block by just the words end block. And you can also end a block by using the name. So you could put end block title. But in this case, we're just going to leave it at end block because it's pretty simple to understand what's going on. You would use a named end block when you've got tons of blocks on a page and it you know it can get a bit complicated. But in our case, this is nice and simple. So let's get rid of this uh, hello world and let's create ourselves a new main tag. And inside that main tag, again, let's create a new block. Can you guess what we're gonna call it? Block main. And let's end that block with end block. So, you know, nice, simple syntax that makes sense. So what have we done here? We've used these blocks, we've created these blocks in our base template. And what we're going to do, we're, we're going to create a child template, which is going to inherit all of the code in this template. And then whatever we put in the child templates, we plug these gaps. And it will make more sense when we create a child template. So let's go ahead and create our first child template. So make sure you got that saved. And in our file explorer, let's come to our index. So, you know, this was the original page that we created and it's got all of this kind of boilerplate, you know, we've got the HTML tags, we've got the head tags, we've, we're doing these imports. Well, in fact, what we're going to do is just go ahead and get rid of that. So how do, this is going to be our first child template. So how do we do that? So again, we use the same syntax the set of single curly brackets and then a set of percentage symbols. And then inside, this is, what we're doing here, we're gonna extend our base template into our child template. So we use the word extends and then we give it a set of quotes and then we give it a path to the uh, base template that we want to extend. And in our case, it's, uh, and it's all from the templates directory. So in our case, it's going to be admin template. No, not admin, sorry, because we're working in public. It's going to be public templates, public template. So let's go ahead and do that. Public templates. And then the name of the file, the name of the uh, the base template file. So public, uh, what do we call it? Public template. Cannot type today, too early public template.html. So what we've done is extended our base template. So whenever we render index.html, it's going to pull in all the code from our base template. In this case, public template.html is going to pull it all in and render it into the browser. So now we need to plug those blocks that we created. So we created a block called title and we created a block called main. So now we've got to fill in these blocks. So let's go ahead and do that. And thankfully, it's very, very simple. We just put block plus the name of the block. So block title. And then we can go ahead and close that block. And now we can actually fill in the code that we wanna put into our template. We can plug those gaps. So let's just put um, the title of the page. So index. And it is as simple as that. And now let's do the same with our block main. Let's go ahead and end that block. And then, so whatever we put inside a block main is going to be plugged into this into this section here. So really, really nice. So let's do a just some very, very simple uh, bootstrap. So we've got a div with a class of container. And let's put a row and a column. And if you guys aren't using VS Code or you don't know, you can just um, to create to qu quickly create a, a div. You just do a dot 
and then the name and the class of the div. So in our case, we just want a div with a class of col. So go ahead and do that. And in here, we're just gonna put a h1, and we're gonna call this home. Cool, so we've created our first child template. So just to recap, we've extended using the extends, and then we give it a path to our base template. And then we plug the gaps. So we've got block title. Let's change that to home, actually. So we've got block title um, with home, and we've got our block main and the HTML that we want to plug the gaps with. So there we go. So let's go ahead and um, render this. So if we come back to our index and reload, there we go. We've got home. And if we do, I'm gonna open the developer tools with Control Alt I, and then to inspect the HTML, you can do Control U. So you can see what's happening here. So if we actually look at our views, we're, we're just rendering this page here. We're just rendering this HTML. But because we've told it that we're extending a template and we're using these blocks to plug the gaps, it's bringing in all of this HTML and then plugging the gaps. So if we take a look at the source code, you can see our block title has translated it's transformed this section here and replaced it with the values that we want. And it's also done the same with our block main. So that's our child template, but it looks a, uh, you know, it looks a little bit boring at the moment. So why don't we give ourselves a nav? That will make things a little bit more visual. So in the bootstrap documentation, come down to components and then come down to nav bar. And I'm just going to scroll down and get ourselves a nice simple nav bar. And it's just this one here without any sort of bells or whistles. So go ahead and copy that. And back in VS Code in our public template. So in, in your base templates, you really want the code that you're going to be reusing across multiple pages. So, you know, for example, if, if we weren't using templates, we would have to have all of this code in index.html and then if we make any changes then we have to change every page that features that same html so it can get extremely tedious so that's why using base and child templates is so convenient because we don't have to keep writing the same code you know it's efficient there's a programming concept or principle called dry and it just stands for don't repeat yourself because repeating yourself is stupid so let's go ahead and put our nav in. So just under the uh, opening body tag, I'm gonna go ahead and stick in a nav. Let me close that so you guys can see what's going on and I'll make this a little bigger. And if you wanna format some HTML, you can just right click and format document and that's gonna clean things up nicely. So this is our public uh, base template. So let's go ahead and let's just change the name to Flask, so this the navbar brand is the logo that's gonna show in the top left of the nav. And I'm just gonna delete some of this. You can leave it or you can delete it. I'm gonna take off the active because we're gonna activate the uh, icons in the nav with some JavaScript later on. And let's go ahead and change some of the uh, href tags. So when someone clicks on our nav, I want it to take them home. Well, when someone clicks on the uh, the brand logo in the top left, I want it to take them to our the root of our site. And uh, yeah, we can leave that there for now. We'll just have a uh, another home link and we'll have an about. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two links. We don't need that. And let's change that to about. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything for the nav. So let's save that and then come back to our browser. Boom. So you can see now we've uh, th this nav is being rendered because it's in our base template. And if we click there, we you know it takes us to the root and again to the root and if we click there we get to our about page. Obviously we haven't um, if we if we come to about we haven't told the about page that there's any kind of templates. In fact, I think 
if I remember correctly, yeah, about it's not even returning a template. So we'll just leave that for now. That's going to be one of your assignments. So just hang tight till the uh, end of the episode. So right, let's move on. Let's uh, let's work on our admin template. So what I'm going to do is just everything in public template. I'm going to copy and let me uh, close that. And in fact, I'm just going to control A to select everything, control V to paste that in. Everything else is pretty much the same. I'm going to change this to admin. And then what I'm going to do, in fact, there's something in the public template that I wanted to do. I want to um, add a link so we can quickly get to the admin section of our site. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to space this div out a bit. This is the uh, div holding the links in the nav. I'm going to copy that down. And in the UL, I'm just going to put a ML auto. I think that's going to fix. I think that's going to do what I want it to do. And then in the href, I'm going to put admin slash dashboard. And I'm going to change that link text to not about to admin. So let me just see how that looks. Let's come back to the root. And then we yeah, we got a nice link in the top corner to admin. And that's going to take us to our admin dashboard. So let's leave that for now. In fact, I might put just a little bit of uh, margin below that nav. And we can do that just in the uh, nav tag in the class with a MB dash three. And that just stands for margin bottom uh, three. So there we go. Nice bit of separation there. So let's work on our admin template. So we've got our links in the top left of the nav bar. We've changed it to admin. And um, let's go ahead and change that link to admin dashboard. And here I just want admin dashboard again and I'm going to change that to dashboard we've got an admin profile and I'm going to change that to profile and also we need that little link in the top right which is going to take us back to our public site so again we can just go ahead and you know what let's, uh, let's format this let's grab that one this is our link in the top right of the nav. And we do that using the ML auto class, which is uh, quite handy just to move things around. I'm gonna change the href to the root and I'm just gonna uh, put return to site. Okay, so that's pretty much our admin template done for now, as far as I can see. So let's change our dashboard. Let's, uh, we, we want this to inherit all of the HTML from admin templates. So let's just go ahead and delete everything there. And let's do the exact same as what we did in public template, but we're gonna give it a different base template to inherit. So extends. And let's look at our file tree here. So it's uh, admin, template, admin, template.html. So that's going to extend our template nicely. We're going to give it a block title. And we're going to call this admin dashboard because that's the title of our page. We'll end the block. And let's do some content in the main block. So block main, we'll close that block. N block, not N block, and let's put some HTML. So I will do the exact same container. We'll do a dot row, hit tab, dot col, hit tab, and we'll do an H1 admin dashboard. Okay, cool. I still need to fix this uh, spacing issue. Format the document, go ahead and click save. Right, so we've created our child template in the uh, admin dashboard HTML, which is gonna inherit everything from the admin template. 
In fact, I think I've named that incorrectly. I've named that as admin template. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that. That shouldn't have an S on the end. So if you if you did the same mistake as me, then just go ahead and change that. And in dashboard, yep, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's, uh, let's reload our index. And if we click on admin, there we go. That takes us through to the admin section of the site. We get dashboard. We get profile, but obviously we haven't done anything with the uh, profile route, which you can see here. We're just returning some text. And let's go back. And if we click on return to site, then that takes us back to the home. So that's pretty much it for this one. Um, what I want you to do as an assignment is go ahead and convert the about route in views.py and the profile route in the admin profile. What I want you to do is do the same as what we've done with these two views. So how are you going to do that? Well, we've already got our base templates. So what I want you to do is create a uh, an about HTML file and that's going to be your new child template. I want you to return that in this route and I want you to inherit the templates for admin and for public and do the same in the about page here. So about and profile, create a new child template, inherit their corresponding uh, base templates and then render them to the page. So that's your assignment. So guys, I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and uh, be sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. In the next episode, we're going to be looking more at Ginger. Um, we're going to be passing variables and values from our Flask roots into our HTML templates and then we're going to be working with them. So we're going to work with lists, we're going to work with variables, we're going to work with classes, we're going to work with dictionaries. We're going to do all sorts of cool stuff in our HTML with Ginger. So hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you on the next one.